Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm glad to introduce our new project, Hydrogen Powering of Vessels. So this project is led by Mr. Andrew Harris from BMT. And the objectives of this uh, research um, are to do feasibility study of uh, hydrogen-powered vessels and uh, hydrogen carrier uh, ammonia-powered vessels. So currently, we have uh, 12 uh, research partners. Uh, this project uh, is still open. We welcome any company who are interested in this topic join in. So uh, let me take a few minutes to discuss the impact of this project and uh, where we are headed. So this session, we're talking about decarbonization. So first, let's look at uh, global maritime industries uh, decarbonization commitment. In 2022, last year, the whole industry emitted 690 million tons of greenhouse gas. So that, that is 1.5 times of Australia's emissions. If we continue, sorry, if we continue with the business as euro, the emission could reach greater than 1,000 million tons by 2050. So if we follow IMO initial strategy, we have an opportunity to cut emissions by 50% by 2050. So let's look at this area. This is where we are working hard to decarbonize to uh, achieve IMO's target. It is a challenge, but also an opportunity, because 1 to 1.4 trillion US dollars will be required to decarbonize this industry. And 80% of the money will be spent on land-based infrastructure and 13 for ship technologies. Despite IMO has set target, it is still being criti criticized for not, be, not taking enough responsibility. So in July of this year, just 50, 50 days later, IMO will discuss to reach net zero by 2050. So this area, we need to work harder and harder. But it's also an opportunity to innovate and transform this industry. So here, this is where we are today. So it's a long journey, we're just beginning. So this is a basic background of the international shaping industry's uh, background. But how about Australia? Let's have a look at Australia. The first question is, how many vessels on Australian waters? According to MSR's data, as of today, we have 3,542 registered vessels that are less than 30 years old. So we consider these vessels to be, to be operating currently. So if we look at, it, look at it closer, we can see that almost 95% of the vessels are small-scale vessels that are less than 50 meters. And the total rated power of all of these vessels is around 1.4 gigawatts. So that's uh, equivalent to a mid-sized city in Australia. I'm living in Launceston. Launceston's uh, power level is quite similar to 1.4 gigawatt. So the total annual energy demand we can work out is 8,600 gigawatt hour. So it's equivalent to 0 0.74 million tons of fossil fuel. So we can work out the total emissions of Australian vessels is 2.42 million tons of carbon equivalent. So that accounts for only 0.5% of uh, the whole country's emission. It's not a lot, but uh, we have to take the responsibility. So the small vessels account for 60% of the total emission. And if we zoom in on the small vessels, we found that over 80% of the vessels are over 10 years old. So that means in the next 10 to 20 years, these vessels could be replaced by new ones. So this is our opportunity to put zero emission vessels into the market. 
but how? So let's have a look. This is the solutions for decarbonization. This is a family tree. We are talking about zero emission, zero emission vessels. So we focus on biofuels and green electricity. Biofuels, we have biodiesel, bio LNG, and biomethanol. For green electricity, we have two pathways. You can use battery or e-fuse. So e-fuse includes e-hydrogen, e-ammonia, e-methanol, and e-LNG. So what's the impact of using this uh, fuse for a ship design? So if a ship uses traditional fuel, fossil fuel, we consider the fuel volume and weight to be one unit. And under the same energy value, we can compare the difference. So clearly we can see the difference. We have a lot of challenge for ship design. And also, we need to consider the risks because the new fuels pose new risks. For example, ammonia is highly toxic, hydrogen is explosive, so we have to, ma to, to study how to manage these new risks. In this project, we only focus on hydrogen and ammonia, but that doesn't mean we are against other solutions. The first step will focus on hydrogen, and the second phase will focus on ammonia. So why hydrogen? Because hydrogen is a direct energy carrier of renewable and electricity. And from a well to weak perspective, it can reach almost zero emissions. And no air plumes, no toxic, and technology are mature. But we have to face some challenges. For example, risks, lack of uh, regulations, and the supply chain, and we need uh, enough uh, infrastructure to support this uh, industry. Fortunately, currently, we have 40 existing hydrogen-powered vessels in the world. So we have built a database that includes all these uh, vessels and uh, the data. Um, these vessels provide enough, um, not enough, it's uh, interesting knowledge and experience. So interesting, we can see that 85% of existing vessels are less than 15 meters long. So it caters to the scenario quite similar to those in Australia. This is one project from our database. This is uh, uh, how a hydrogen powered vessels looks like. I was uh, involved in this project in the uh, last uh, three years. This is a passenger vessel on the Yangtze River in China. Um, she has 32 high pressure hydrogen cylinders storing 240 kilograms of hydrogen. It's equivalent eight uh, megawatt, uh, 8,000 uh, kilowatt hours. And she also has a, a booster battery that is for high speed scenarios. So this is how a um, hydrogen powered vessels looks like. And as technology mature, we are happy to see that by 2030, more and more large vessels will use hydrogen uh, fuel cell technologies at megawatt levels. So the largest one will be 23 megawatts. And in Australia, we have two projects uh, have been announced formally. And another uh, big challenge is the regulatory readiness. And uh, a great uh, progress has been made we are happy to, to see that uh, from different levels, IMO, MSR, and classification societies. But there are still some uh, gaps. For example, there's no regulations for hydrogen storage on ships. There's no regulations for bunkering. So we need to uh, work on these areas to fill these gaps. So what do we do in our project? So we'll design, uh, um, capture a uh, conceptual design for hydrogen power train for our target vessels, and to do life cycle assessment from a well to weak uh, emission perspective and a gradual to grave economic performance perspective. And we have two wins to support this target. On the left, you can see we'll do technical feasibility, including technologies, regulations, and the risk assessment method. And on the right hand side, we will do fuel, ability, fuel availability study from a supply, a supply chain perspective. And for ammonia, uh, we'll do the similar thing. 
So this is our project. Thank you for listening.